I'm the oldest in our family. Uh, my sister's a year younger than me, and I have two younger brothers. And my sister's wedding was a uh, was a big production. <laughs> and my family, uh, my father was an airline pilot. He did pretty well for himself, so it was a, a really, really big thing. And the cool thing about it is uh, when my sister's wedding happened, I was on active duty as a SEAL. My other brother was on active duty as a Marine, and my youngest brother was on active duty as a Ranger. So you can imagine uh, that. My younger brother brought one of his Ranger friends to it. Uh, there was a police officer uh, that was a friend of the families that was there. It was kind of just a, a rough bunch. Uh, my cousin was wild, and it's just everybody there. You know, it's just the Shipleys, and of course Diane is there too. So we have. It's a rough group. And we have the rehearsal uh, dinner, and then we all go out. The whole flipping bunch of us go to a, a nightclub in uh, Easton, Maryland. And uh, it doesn't take long before all hell breaks loose. You gotta set it up better than that. Don's family lived in a mansion of a house on the Chesapeake Bay. It was this big, sprawling Chesapeake Bay house, just what you think of a house in Chesapeake on the water. A uh, big, long, white house, gazebo, sailboats parked out at the dock, in-ground pool. Uh, everybody that was anybody was there. So uh, Don's sister and brother-in-law, they're both pilots. His dad's a pilot, SEAL, Marine, Ranger, and it's a huge deal. Uh, they had these big tents set up. They had a DJ there. Oyster shuckers on the end of the of the uh, dock out there. People could just walk up and get oyster on the half shell. So it was a huge thing. And then we go out. We get to this nightclub, and my cousin's very attractive. And over on the dance floor. I see her being accosted by some drunk. It was enough for me to run across a series of tables and splatter his fucking guts all over that dance floor. I just clocked that dude to the deadbolt run and all hell broke loose. It became one of those when you get into a good dick dragger in a bar, and I've been in a number of them, when you're in a group and that much shit is happening around you, the whole bar erupted. You start punching out any unfriendly face, any face you don't recognize starts getting daubed. And that's exactly what happened. Diane, my cousin, my brothers, the cop, the rangers, the marines, all in this little tight circle. And we were just fucking punching every <laughs> unfriendly face, every face we didn't recognize. The whole bar at that point kind of turns on us. And we're just going from one end of it to the other, punching fuckers beating them up and trying to get out the door of the uh, of the bar. It was like something out of a movie. When you're watching a movie and a big fight breaks out, that's how quick it happened. Don lunged across that dance floor. He took the first blow and all of us simultaneously just started beating the shit out of people. Me too. I was on the back of some dude <laughs> hanging up by from his neck and just beating the shit out of him. We were all fighting. I've never seen anything like that. It really was out of a movie. We, we put a hurt on them people that night. We are moving around this bar, fighting the entire bar, just a small group of us, and trying to get to an exit. And we get backed into a corner of this thing and everything stops. The whole bar's around us and everything just stopped. And we're looking at them, <laughs> they're looking at us. You know, we had just been, this has been going on for a good while now. And out of the, out of nowhere, this fucking guy sticks his face out of the crowd right there in that circle of us. And he's holding his fucking eye. <laughs> and he goes, Hey man, what the fuck you hit me for? What the fuck's your fucking problem? And I said, I don't know, I'll fucking mic you again. And I fucking waylaid that son of a bitch and the whole thing started again. Blew up again. Uh, and finally we worked our way to the uh, to the door. 
And as we're going out the door, the cop, this is how long this shit been going on. The fucking cops are all outside waiting for us uh, to exit. You know, they, all the cop cars are out there. The fucking lights are all going. And so I tell Diane, <laughs> I'm going to get out of this shit. I'm really good at doing this. So I'm going to blame it on somebody in the bar, not me, for why this fight started in the first place. And what I tell you, tell him. So he said, so he grabbed your tit. And I went, he didn't grab my tit, Donnie. <laughs> I said, he grabbed your fucking tit. And I said, no, he didn't. I was too slow to play along with the game. I made you so mad that night. Okay, he's right there. I was like, tell him, tell him he grabbed your tit. And, Who grabbed my tit? Nobody grabbed my tit. <laughs> I didn't, nobody grabbed my tit. So tell him he grabbed tit. We get out of it. We're all in the military. It's a big flag waving town, you know, and we got a cop with us who pulls out his badge real quickly. Well, and, but after that, we decide it's really time to hightail it out of there. So we leave. And I wasn't drunk, but I was extremely nervous. I was worried about what Don's mom was going to say. You know, we've screwed up the wedding. And so I'm driving down this little road in, in Easton, Maryland. And I see the cop lights. <laughs> I think he's almost passed out over there because he had been drinking, but I was sober. But I was so nervous. And that cop pulled me over and told me to get out of the car. I was going to have to take the sobriety test. And it was simply saying my ABCs. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. But I got about halfway through that shit, and I could not remember my ABC, so I asked if I could start again, and I had to sing them. So here I am, a grown woman on the side of the road, and I'm singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> he made me touch my nose and do all that heel to toe shit. Well, I wasn't drunk, so I got out, but man, that scared the shit out of me. He I got thought he you like that guy did the other day. It was a headlight thing. Something, a, a tail light, yeah, a tail or something. Diane's terrible with cars she doesn't know, but yeah, it's the lights or something. It was something stupid, but I was so embarrassed that I had to sing those ABCs, uh, but I just lost my train of thought. I think I was just nervous. You all over there in the passenger seat <laughs> passed out. So that was another highlight of the evening before we started in uh, the actual day of the wedding. So... The wedding is starting the next day. All the preparations, my, you know, it was a really big to do. They have people there shucking oysters and making drinks, and you know, it was just a big bunch of shit. And my mother was visibly upset, terribly upset. So you know, zero zero, he's our hero. I'm gonna go and help my mother out. So uh, I said, "What's the matter?" She goes, "Oh, it's it's, it's nothing." I go, "What's the matter?" She goes. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> and I go, will you tell me what's got you so worked up? And she goes, oh, the DJ isn't where he's supposed to be. And I said, oh, where's he? Well, I'll go fix that guy. So I go over to move the DJ where he's supposed to be and quit giving my mother a flipping headache. And when I got up to him and uh, said something <laughs> to him, he turned around. And he had two black eyes. <laughs> he took one look at me and he goes, okay, wherever you are. Oh, I'll move right now. It was that same guy that stuck his face in the crowd that night. I just and whopped him again. So it's a big fancy wedding and all these people are dressed up. The DJ's got two swollen <laughs> shut eyes and his mother has this thing catered. So they... They come to the house, they have, she has a big, beautiful gourmet kitchen, and so everybody is cooking in there, all of these, uh, the caters. And the first thing when we walked up, this guy comes running out, and they had blown a fuse, so none of the ovens were working. Do you remember? Your poor mother, I felt so bad for her that day. But it was, it was quite funny to have that DJ with the, with the two black eyes. It's a wonder we hadn't all got arrested. Don called it a family bonding dumb. He said that's what we needed, family bonding. My dad certainly got a kick out of this story. Well, yeah, he, he loves did. that shit. We came out of the uh, Persian Gulf. We had been in the Gulf on these uh, barges, these secret barges during the Iran-Iraq War, and we hadn't been drinking. We weren't no drinking. 
and they take us into Bahrain and we are going to get on a plane and uh, fly home in a day or two or whatever the hell it was. And so we get a liberty brief about Bahrain and the guy doing it is an E-9 Special Forces guy with two black eyes. This is the guy telling us what not to do in Bahrain and how much trouble you can get in and he's got two fucking black eyes from somebody <laughs> beating the shit out of him. <laughs> And I was the leading petty officer of that platoon. And my platoon commander uh, was an older ex-enlisted guy. And he's listening to this guy. If you, if you show up drunk at the airport, they won't let you on the plane. If you do this, if you do that, it's just all hell. And I can feel his antennas going up in the background. <laughs> and I know I was always a master at beating people to the punchline of never letting them say no. I knew he was about to tell me and the platoon chief, no drinking in Bahrain. Let's just go home and get out of this safe. So I went up to uh, Terry, big Terry Hop, and uh, I told him, Sir, we're all big boys. The platoon here, if you tell them just to moderate it, uh, but you just can't restrict them after months of uh, not doing that. Don't do that. Trust the guys. They'll look out after you. Just tell them, take it easy in drinking moderation. And he goes, <laughs> Okay. An hour later, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we were burning Bahrain down, man. Oh my God! And he was just the, the red going up the, his head. No. Uh, yeah. Well, you knew that wasn't gonna work. Drinking moderation after doing all of that shit. I mean, that's your time to let your hair down. And seals are are widely known for letting their hair down, especially when they're not supposed to. They gave us a chartered flight on Hawaiian Air. We had the whole airplane after we got out of Bahrain. And we drank that we drank that plane dry down to Kahlua. That was the only <laughs> thing we had left. We had a long flight home on a Hawaiian airline, and we drank every drop of liquor on that plane. Behind the scenes, life of a seal. Any you DJs out there want to give my mother a ration of shit? I'll be there to fucking take care of your <laughs> sorry ass. Blap blap. It just it one thing after another at that wedding and then Don's cousin Carrie Carrie worked down here for a while some of y'all know her but my little boy was a very good swimmer I don't think Carrie knew that he was a very good swimmer and her little boy Jared somehow Carrie from way across the lawn sees my son fall in the pool jump in the pool or something <laughs> and Carrie goes sprinting across the damn lawn in her pretty yellow dress and she dives in the pool <laughs> to save the two drowning kids. <laughs> oh my God. It was just, that was the wedding from hell, really. It is everything happened. So then all eyes were on Carrie. Watch this crazy bitch doing in the pool. It was so funny. We all had a good time and a good, and a good laugh out of it. So for us, it was a fun wedding. My brothers and me were all ushers for the wedding, and I'm in my dress choker whites and white. And a couple of old women came in for the wedding. We're in this church, and we're escorting them and all that shit. And this uh, old woman, widow, I'm sure her husband served and all that shit, she grabbed a hold of my arm and went, Oh, <laughs> oh. Smeared oh, lipstick oh. and shit bright red lipstick she just ground all her makeup <laughs> right into into my uniform you know and i went oh my god so if that wasn't bad enough I, I take care of that as best i can and i go out to on the dock to check out the oyster shuckers they got all these uh, guys out there popping oysters and everyone's eating them and i'm standing there in my dress whites and one of them takes a bucket of oysters and dumps it into another bucket <laughs> full of that oyster mud, and it just went all over my dress whites. <laughs> so Don's sister Lisa was going to get a profession oh videographer, you know, and a videographer and photographer for this. Well, I was really into photography then, and I was quite good. <laughs> but we were all a little bit hungover, and you talking about unorganized. So the wedding's down here, and I have my camera, and I'm way up top in like these bleacher things and that's where I'm filming from I took video of people coming in of the guests of the beautiful chandeliers 
And about the time that wedding started, my battery started flashing. The freaking battery was dead on that camera. And somebody down below um, in the audience had the other battery. So I had to run all the way down those steps, get my battery, come back up, put it in my camera. And about that time, they were being pronounced mad at mine. I thought she was going to kill me. <laughs> we really screwed that wedding up something awful. Power drinking. Yeah, I felt terrible. But, oh, Lord, it, it was fun. We've had some good, good funny things happen to us. My family. <laughs> Rough bunch. We fight hard, we play hard, but we always love each other and got each other's back in the end. But, man, the Shipley clan, we have got some stories to tell. My dad was an Air Force fighter pilot, and her husband's father was a Marine Corps fighter pilot. And you think it was bad with me and my Ranger and Marine brother, the, the trade and the insults. You should have Ooh. heard those two go at it. It oh, was too. Air Force. Rah, rah, rah. Fighter pilot. It was just this testosterone-laced wedding. Yes. Of special forces, fighter pilots, just... Every badass you could get on the planet was in attendance at that thing, and uh, you know. jockeying for position. But the two fighter pilots, <laughs> they really were like this the whole time. There wasn't a whole lot of love lost between them. No, sure. no. All right. That's our fighting story. Thanks, everybody, for all the support. We really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to all of our silly jokes and tales that we tell all the time. Uh, we like reminiscing, and, and we like that you guys respond always with good uh, supportive comments. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you the next time. I, I actually did this video. I thought of this thing because of uh, Tom, one of my subscribers, said that uh, he's going to get into a fist fight in a couple of days <laughs> over some neighbor and asked me for advice. He said he's never thrown a punch, uh, hasn't thrown a punch in 20 years. So this just popped in. Well, you ought to fly up there and have his back. My advice to you is to throw the first punch. The first punch wins nine out of ten fights. And it better be a good one. Good luck, Tom. Bye, kick, guys. Kick some ass. <laughs> yeah. Kick his fucking ass. <laughs>